Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with radical expressions. We have an equation and we're supposed to evaluate another expression and they're both radicals. How radical can this be, right? So we have x minus 3 divided by the square root of x equals 10 and for particular values of x that satisfy the first equation, we want to evaluate x minus 3 times the square root of x. So I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So we're given an equation, so why not solve it, right? x minus 3 over square root of x equals 10. What is the best way to solve this equation? Well, I think we could use substitution before things get messier. So why not set square root of x equal to t? t is one of my favorite variables, also my favorite drink. t minus 3 over t squared equals 10. Awesome. Well, not so awesome if you make a common denominator or multiply everything by t squared, you get t cubed minus 3 equals 10t squared. And if you put everything on the same side, t cubed minus 10t squared minus 3 equals 0, uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem because we have a cubic equation. How do you solve a cubic equation? Well, you can use the formula, but you don't want to have a t squared in the equation. How do you get rid of that? You can replace t with something like this. Let's just say we use y as a variable, then don't ask why. Plus the coefficient of t squared, of course, I took the opposite, 10 divided by the degree of the polynomial 3. So this will do the trick. Are you ready? Okay, we're going to go ahead and replace t with this. No big deal because there's only two occurrences of t with the cube and squares. And you know what? We can put this 3 on the right-hand side. Just leave it alone as a constant. Looks good. Let's go ahead and expand it. I usually expand a plus b cubed as follows. I take cube the first term. I cube the second term. If you cube 10, you get 1,000. And then 3 cubed is 27. And then I do 3ab, which is going to be 10y, multiplied by a plus b, a special formula also used in cubic formula. Okay? But let's get rid of the y squared first. This is going to allow us to do it. And then minus 10 times, you can just square this with the formula. Remember it. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. This will be 20y over 3. And the whole thing is equal to 3, of course. We'll take that care of that at the end. Let's go ahead and distribute everything. y cubed plus 1,000 over 27 plus 10y squared plus 100 over 3y Minus 10y squared. Uh-oh, y squared cancels out. Nice. That was expected, right? 1,000 over 9 minus 200 over 3 multiplied by y. It's probably better to write it that way. So we get to see that it's the coefficient of y. Okay? You see now? We have a simpler equation. y cubed, 100 thirds minus 200 thirds is going to give you minus 100 thirds y. And then we will have two constants. This one minus that one. We're going to multiply by 3. That's going to give us a negative 2,000 divided by 27. And that's just a constant, so we're going to leave it at that. Let's go ahead and set that equal to a constant. And we get our depressed cubic. Yay! Don't be too depressed. The cubic is depressed. You're not, right? So now, what are we going to do with this? Well, we're going to remember the following identity, which is something that I almost always use. Uh, this basically factors sum of two cubes, which you can then turn into two factors. But here, here, uh, this allows you, if you set a plus b equal to y, then this is going to allow you to uh, come up with the cubic equation. So let's go ahead and set a plus b equal to y. And then comparing the coefficients, we notice that 3ab must equal 100 over 3, and a cubed plus b cubed must equal... 2,000 divided by 27. Of course, if you divide both sides by 3, you're going to get 100 over 9. And then if you cube this, oh, you're going to get a large number. 1 million. How nice, right? And 8 cubed is, I think, equal to 729. And then here you get yourself a system, which I don't think you want to solve. But th that's the whole idea. We can basically replace b cubed with 2,000 over 27 minus a cubed. And this can be substituted here, right here. a cubed times a cubed is going to give you a to the 6. But don't worry about it because by setting a cubed equal to c, you're going to get a quadratic 
This is not going to be hexic. This is not going to be uh, hectic, uh, septic, whatever. It's just going to be quadratic at the end. By solving for C, you get the values of A cubed and B cubed. Then you can cube root both, add them up. That'll give you Y. And then you'll go back and back substitute to find T. You see, it's a long process, very, very painful, super duper, super duper, super duper uh, time consuming, you know, uh, cumbersome, whatever you call it. So let's go ahead and look for an alternative method, which should be a lot easier, right? Because this is a special type of equation. Any problem that comes up on math competitions and most problems on my channel will allow for an alternative solution. That's why I pick these problems. And sometimes I write these problems, okay? A lot of times people are gonna ask, well, how do you come up with these problems? I have tons of books, internet, friends, and just, you know, I just think about a problem. So I have plenty of resources in that sense, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, I'm gonna make an interesting move here. That is gonna be the splitting up to 10 into nine plus one. And you might be asking like, why would you do that? Because I'm gonna split it, split it up into two pieces and that is gonna allow me to factor this. You know how? Let's bring the nine over here and let's bring the radical on the other side. And now we're gonna have something nice. Let me show you. If you make a common denominator, you're gonna get square root of x plus three divided by square root of x. Again, this may still look meaningless, but take a look at this. If you try very hard, you can factor this using difference of two squares. How? This is square root of x squared, and this is three squared. So here you go. Square root of x plus three, times square root of x minus three. You should be familiar with the difference of two squares. I think there are two things that are super important in math. One is the difference of two squares. The other one is the Pythagorean theorem. Of course, there's much more, but those two, I believe, are essential, 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 okay? Now, here's what we get from here. And how do you handle that? Well, you could actually go ahead and cross multiply first. That'll probably make things a little easier. So bring the root x over there. And now notice that, I mean, you shouldn't cancel out anything. That's problematic. But actually you can. You know why? Because this can never be zero. You know why? Because if x is real, square root of x cannot be negative. Square root of x plus three cannot be zero. So we're allowed to divide by this. Okay, divide both sides by root x plus three. Yes, you can do it. It's legitimate. And they're just gone and you end up with a one. Okay, and you're like, so what? Now, and I say, take a look at that. Distribute this. You get x minus 3 times the square root of x equals, ta-da, 1. And that's what we were looking for all this time. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And... Bye-bye.